My name is David Van Voorst. I'm partners with Curtis Corson in Plantation Beach Plums. I'm president of the Cape May County Beach Plum Association. I'm also president of the Cape May County Board of Agriculture. We are located in southern New Jersey and Cape May County, which is a southern peninsula of the state. This farm has been in existence since 1636. At one point, it was produced uh, Fort Hook lima beans for Seabrook in Bridgeton, and it has evolved into various crops ever since. Uh, the beach plum is a high value niche crop that uh, yields the most economic profit per acre. This farm uh, started planting uh, beach plums in 2006. We began harvesting approximately two to three years later, and we've been in production since. The uh, operation of a beach plum farm begins early spring and in March when fertilizer is applied to the crop. We also begin monitoring and begin our spray program of a dormant spray prior to emergence of, of the buds. We then continue through the spring and it's very, very critical with a spray program because of, although it's a native crop and people tend to think, oh, it grows wild here, there are no uh, native uh, insects or diseases. That's not true. It's like any other fruit crop. The plum cuculea is one of the bad insects that begin in early bloom stage. Also, we begin then with blossom blight sprays. Then continuing through the bloom stage, one of the uh, uh, necessary weed control methods has to be applied to control the, uh, under the canopy of the trees. As far as irrigation, we irrigated when we first set out the trees and they were young, but being that they grow on such adverse dry conditions on the secondary dunes, they are very uh, tolerant of drought. The uh, soil fertility should be at a, a pH of 6.5, which you would think, well, maybe they want more acidic soil like blueberries, and they don't. And for the fruit production, they, they need a 6.5 target for your pH. There is some nitrogen applied in the spring and some, pot some potassium. All of Cape May County, the phosphorus level is off the scale. We do not need to apply phosphorus to our trees. Irrigation wise, probably the most optimum irrigation system would be a drip irrigation system, both for water conservation purposes and for efficiency. But we've found that we've seen no uh, positive results from our, uh, applying water during the growing season and it tends to, as we uh, irrigate with an overhead hose reel, uh, it tends to just promote more mold and wet conditions. Pruning is a big part that takes place in the dormant season after the first of the year. We use an air blast sprayer to apply our insecticides and uh, a boom sprayer for herbicides under the canopy of the trees. Uh, we have a uh, John Deere tractor. This is one of the most important pieces of equipment in this orchard. It's a John Deere narrow row four-wheel drive totally enclosed cab tractor. Very typical of what's used in vineyards and uh, blueberry farms. We use it to apply insecticides and fungicides through the air blast sprayer on the rear of this tractor. Mounted on the front is a boom sprayer that we use to maintain the uh, strip under the trees with an herbicide. There are pre-emergence herbicides and there are some uh, uh, non-selective herbicides used. We do not use Roundup because of the suckers that grow under the beech plum trees, which would take the product into the tree and damage the tree. Throughout the summer, we must continue with it with our spray program as the recommendations from Rutgers University. It's very important to follow that program as it applies to plums. In order to improve the quality of the fruit, you need to eliminate any insect damage or fungus. 
What is the optimal plant spacing for a beach plum? Well, this is a new endeavor. No one has ever really entered into the propagation and, and cultiv or cultivation of the beach plum. And we began with various spacings. My trees are spaced on a 16 foot between row, eight foot within the row spacing, which is the minimum. I would not recommend anything less than that. Some of the growers who tend to prune more like a um, bush rather than a tree have closer spacings, but they all say, I wish I'd planted them further apart. <laughs> as far as pruning the style or method of pruning, we, uh, I have found that the method used for peaches or the open vase type of pruning has been the most productive with the beech plum. Uh, what it does, it allows in sunlight, air movement, the humidity dries quickly and it uh, reduces, helps reduce mold and fungus growth within the foliage. We got to open it up, let the air in, let the sun in. How do we know when to harvest? We begin the 1st of August going through the orchard and we identify the trees that are optimum time for harvest by the color the taste and the, and the overall uh, yield of the tree. The picking operation consists of a steel chainsaw company that makes an olive harvester for use in Europe. We use it on the beech plums. It shakes limbs, not the whole tree. It's not like the cherry picker that shakes the whole tree. We shake individual limbs. The uh, recovery system consists of some uh, tarps on a PVC frame on wheels that we roll up and down the row. We place it adjacent to the tree from each side and shake onto that. There's a hole in the bottom of the tarp. It goes into a 40-pound grape lug. The lugs are picked up by a Kubota utility vehicle brought to the packing house for sorting and cleaning. The sorting equipment consists of an adapted blueberry cleaning machine, which the fruit is then dumped into an infeed conveyor, goes through a column of air that removes leaves and debris, goes through a screen sizing, out a what we refer to as the riddle, which then again sizes the fruit. And the fruit coming off of that out of the cleaning machine goes to an inspection conveyor for high grading of the fruit. It runs off that conveyor into a lug and it is uh, packaged in 40 pound grape lugs, taken to a cooler and then delivered to market. Our orchard right now has 600 trees in an acre and a half. Our best year, we harvested 18,000 pounds of fruit. In the fall, after harvest, one of the first things we do is come in and try to remove any unpicked fruit that has mummified or was moldy or whatever and get those off the tree. Then in November, we begin our early pre-emergent uh, herbicide treatments of the field. Then there's kind of a lull for a short period of time, and we here in Cape May County do not begin pruning until after the first of the year because we, we we do get more moderate temperatures which can promote growth which will then will just be killed by the freeze winter freeze so we wait till it's totally dormant there will be no growth, growth new growth starting and then we begin the pruning we've experimented with a, two or three different styles of pruning at one point we tried a trellis system to help support the trees and the central leader through personal experience with the trellis system, as the trees matured, the trellis system was removed and I see no need for a trellis system. What we do uh, attempt to do is prune them like peach trees in an open vase pattern, and that promotes sunlight in air movement, which reduces mold and fungus. Also throughout the summer, there's a constant mowing of the um, uh, area between the trees. We maintain that with a tractor and a finish mower. During the bloom stage, uh, late frost will cause damage and we will not get the pollination because of the 
damage to the, to the blossom. Uh, we do bring in bees for pollination. Rutgers currently, uh, through uh, Jenny, the county extension agent, is conducting a pollination study at our orchard. Uh, as far as its frost damage uh, problem with the beech plums, yes it is. Because of the time of bloom, a, a late frost will damage the uh, blossoms. Hi, I'm Jenny Carlio, a county agent with Rutgers Cooperative Extension. When growing beech plums for fruit production, it's recommended to buy grafted plants because the scion wood will be identical to all of the others in that selection. Um, but with seedlings, then each plant is variable and totally different from the next. And you won't actually know for three to five years what the plant will be like. Beech plums require cross-pollination in order to produce fruit. So you have to have more than one beech plum plant in your planting. So beech plums are still a crop in development. That means that not everything is known yet about how to grow the crop, what kinds of disease problems we have, optimal soil fertilization or pruning practices. So keep this in mind when considering whether or not to grow beech plums. It's important to know that beech plums exhibit a phenomenon known as alternate bearing, which means that some years they'll have a bumper crop and then the next year they'll have almost no crop at all. This can be mitigated through different pruning practices and possibly other fertilization practices, but we're not totally sure yet how to resolve this issue completely. Although beech plums can be grown in many different types of soils, they all have to be well drained. Beach plums are native to the dunes, so which means that they do not require salt or sand, but they can tolerate it easily. If you plant a non-clonal variety of beach plums, each plant will be different from the next, and some will be more susceptible to diseases than others, even if they're right next to each other in the field. This beach plum has been affected with brown rot, the same species of monolinia that affects peaches. Protective fungicide sprays in the early season are extremely important in order to prevent this type of disease. This beech plum has been affected by plum curculio, which is a common insect pest of orchard crops. Hi, my name is Michael Craig. I'm one of the family owners of the Washington Inn in Cape May, New Jersey. When we, when we receive our beech plums during harvest, what do we look for? Well, the great thing about beech plums is there's such a variety of taste profiles that uh, we are exposed to. We have large berries that produce a lot of juice. We have berries that are, um, are deep in purple color. We have berries that are cherry in color. We have berries that are tart. So when we look at the total harvest, uh, because on any given tree, a tree can have perfectly ripe fruit, can have underripe fruit, can have uh, different sized fruit. And we try to exploit that to making a flavor profile that uh, is, is delicious and well-rounded. The beech plums are wonderful because they offer an opportunity to create value-added products. Through our experience in the restaurant, we've been able to experiment because we have a, a kitchen that we're uh, actively using, and we've been able to uh, develop jams, jellies, vinaigrettes, vinegar, uh, purees, uh, and we've uh, tried to find different venues, different people who would be interested in purchasing these value-added beach plum products. We make, a, <clears throat> we make a number of products that we sell. We make our own vinaigrette, which is a beach plum vinegar base, and we make a, a beach plum vinegar. So it's a very artisanal. We actually take red wine vinegar and we macerate it with uh, the skins and the pulp of the beech plums for months and then we bottle that. We also make our traditional jam and jelly and we've made beech plum honey which, was, which is local honey flavored with beech plums. What we've also discovered is that alcohol and beech plums work well together. So we have experimented with uh, traditional a maceration where we're macerating the beech plum fruit with the alcohol to create almost a liqueur type of, of beverage. And we have uh, supplied, and even uh, Dave and, and Alma George have supplied 
uh, Beach Plums to a company in Brooklyn that makes a macerated Beach Plum gin. And that is different from a distilled product. Uh, and the macerated product is, is based from a technique in France where they just take the fruit, they use sugar and alcohol and create the beverage. As a restaurateur, we are always looking for local products that reflect our community, whether it's oysters or fish. And the beach plums are a natural because they are indigenous, they have a lot of history, there's something that people, many people don't know about becomes, because they come from out of town as a tourist. And we're able to offer something as a unique experience and as an expression of the place where we live. In the restaurant, we have the opportunity to work with different farmers who grow different things. For the beach plums, it's, we try to uh, use the same formula of success uh, with our growers. And that form of success is understanding that it's a relationship and it's a um, reciprocal relationship. So we understand that, that we have to work together hand in hand, not only from a buy and sell standpoint, but from a communication standpoint so that the farmer understands exactly what our needs are, understands exactly how we use the product and exactly how we don't use the product so that we're, we're not buying something that's difficult for us to use or is less difficult for us to use because they've, they've made some adjustments. So uh, my, my words to restaurateurs that want to use beach plums is to develop a relationship with the grower, ha understand what their challenges are and what their opportunities are to sell you and then just try to work back and forth because I think that there's a, there's a lot of possibilities and it's a wonderful opportunity for uh, you to network into your community and into your community of farmers. One of the biggest challenges uh, that we have with beach plums is their fragility in how they come in because if they do come in at full ripeness you have a window of, of production that, uh, that has to be met. Otherwise, the, the fruit starts to degrade and you're not going to get the product that you, that you receive. We've, we've taken a page out of the Cranberry Producers Playbook. And what we've done is we understand the importance of freezing the beach plums to maintain their quality. So when we receive beach plums, many times, we're packing them to go right into long storage freezing. And then from that, we're able to pull out box by box the amount that we need for the production that we're doing. And we're able to pull it out and use it in time that is down for the restaurant and we have excess capacity to be able to produce. So not in the summer because the beach plums are usually coming in in the peak of our season, which is August. So we're able to freeze them and then in November be able to ramp up our full production of value-added products.